Welcome. Welcome to the While My Batteries Charge podcast. podcast. Join us as we talk about all things radio controlled. And now, your host. Folks, this man, he is the king. Mr. CCXRC himself. Tony CC. Tony CC. Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to another While My Batteries Charge podcast. It's going to be a great episode today. We've got Josh Rhodes with us, waiting to jump in here in just a second. And we're going to talk RC Fest. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get on with it. What is going on, Josh? Not too much, man. How you been since you got home? I've been good. That drive home was a beast, though. Uh, it oh, was only three and a half hours. <laughs> well, you left late. What time did you end up getting on the I road? left late. You're the one that told, hey, you're Mr. 4.30 in the morning over here leaving. Well, <laughs> I, well, we left the park at that. I went and slept for a little bit. But I got on the road by like eight. I was dead. <laughs> so yeah, we stayed up uh, with <laughs> the guys from Freestyle RC, and then found out that like Pilot Ryan Media and C Mafia and Bobby K and different guys were all hanging out RC Air Marshal down at a uh, RV. We were trying to be the last ones there, but they, I, I mean, they outlasted me. I left, and Freestyle was still there, and they were flying planes and driving cars over with uh, the airplane crew. Mm-hmm. So. It was a late night. <laughs> it was fun, though. It was late so, for me. It was a nice trip back home, though. The only thing I had to deal with was road construction on the way back. That was it. Yeah, because they kicked that up as it gets toward the non-peak hours. So you had to deal mm-hmm. with some, uh, some road construction. So let's talk a little bit about RC Fest. This was the second time that you've gone, right? Yeah, this was the second time. First time in 2019. They didn't have it last year and then this year. So what was it? Um, you came only one day in 2019? Yeah, I was only there for one day in 2019. Unfortunately, I had to work the day before. Couldn't make it to the first day, which was uh, one of those things where you're reading online and you're seeing all the photos and you're like, man, I wish I was there. <laughs> made it out. That's, that's <laughs> Still made it out on the, ne- the following day, and that was, that was a lot of fun. I wished I could have been there the first day as well. Yeah. Um, so this year was bigger and better than even in 2019, I think, at least in yeah. my opinion. I don't know what crowd size was, but actually the way that they put it on felt bigger and better. Would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. I thought it was a lot well, a lot more organized than it was before. Uh, I like the fact that you could hear between sections of things that were going on, you could hear the different announcers talking, and then you would hear, hey, monster trucks are over here, or air flights over here. You kind of knew where you could kind of control the crowd and push them where you wanted to go this time around. Yeah, I would agree with that. I it felt like the way that it was 2019 the air show speakers were like everywhere. Like that was the main narration of the whole event. It felt yeah. like, um, and it did feel like it was much more, you still heard it, but it wasn't so loud in the other sections with the, ba- the basher park. And yeah. All. Yeah. But, I uh, understand what you're saying there. It was quite loud in 2019. You couldn't hear yourself over the air. People talking this time you could hear just about everybody. I think the monster truck section was a little quiet, but everything else around you, you could certainly hear. Yeah, and each each little section had their own microphones and little announcements going and when they were starting things up and running things. Um, I got to do quite a bit this time. I felt like I did more this year than I was able to in 2019 mm-hmm. um, as far as the way that the scheduling was and the things were run. So that was nice. Well, I remember 2019 when you were there. You were seems like you were running around all over the place. You couldn't even hardly catch your breath. This time yeah. around, you seem like you could go somewhere, you could do something, you could come back, you could sit, you could talk a little while. Yeah, a lot more. Fun. It seemed like it was a lot more laid back and fun. Yeah, yeah, and and I, but it was still. I last the time before, I actually didn't participate in anything else other than monster trucks. But this time, I actually did the crawler course mm-hmm. I got times for that in the hill climb, and I did the uh, figure eight with the monster truck with the LMT, which was mm-hmm. awesome. And uh, we can talk about that later. That truck's indestructible. Um, at least the one I put into the uh, the event, I had the trail axles, and we were. It was the one that has those posts, the rebar. Yeah. In it, the toll gate one, and yeah, I was toll gate like, pull trigger into them. I was I was knocking them over. That was my goal. <laughs> once they were out of the way, then you could start targeting cars like traditional figure eight. But um, yeah. So uh, I got to do that, and then I did the um the sumo 
actually as part of the event too. I hadn't ever done the sumo, which is a lot more difficult than I thought it was actually going to be. So, yeah, I was over there for one of those. Uh, Doug Welker was out there as well. He had entered into it, I think with his outcast. And I told him at one point, I said, you need to give it a little bit more throttle if you're going to knock somebody off. Well, he did. And when he did, he actually jumped the guy and over out himself. Yeah. <laughs> And he's that like, I'm not listening to you anymore. <laughs> yeah, that was the problem. I did the same thing with my uh, Italian. That's what I thought. I thought it was low enough I could just hit him with the front end, low and wide, and just but mm -hmm. it still popped right over him. There's definitely a technique to it, and uh, I was eliminated first round, so I did not have the technique. Yeah, I didn't enter it. I didn't. Every time I would go, I would see it running. I'd be like, oh well, the rack is already filled. I guess I guess I can't run it, but. Right. I stuck with the monster truck side of everything and just kind of enjoyed walking around and seeing everything. And I think my favorite thing, I don't know if you ever like saw any of your favorite builds there, but big squid had uh, a booth over there and they had the uh, Marty McFly DeLorean and oh they had goodness. the Toyota from the movies over there. And that blew me away as an eighties kid. I was like, I know those cars. <laughs> did you get to lift up the DeLorean? It's I did like, not, no. it is like a cinder block. It is. Oh, really? oh yeah. It's solid. Um, I saw it at USTE in February mm -hmm. and uh, he let me, hope, you know, pick it up and feel how heavy it was because we were ragging on him about stuff. He's like, dude, lift it up. And I'm like, holy cow. But yeah, probably weighs as much, of, if not more than a monster truck. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I would say more, almost double. Really? <laughs> it's, it's heavy, but um, it's all metal. So let's talk about the monster trucks. That's what I mean of. I think RC Fest is worth going to regardless, but being in the racing or having the ability to go and do some of the racing really was like, well, I'm definitely not going to miss it. Yeah. Because I'm not sure, you know, when else I'm going to get to race at this point. And, uh, you know, with having a race within four hours, I'm going for it. And um, it was pretty awesome. It was a good, it was a good time of racing for sure. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. It's a little different style of racing than what I'm used to. You guys had all dirt jumps out there, whereas Trigger King, we have all wood ramps. It's a little bit different to hit. Uh, you can almost roll some of those obstacles out there, too. I learned from day one to day two that I could roll some stuff and get a little bit better entry into some corners, and I think it helped me out in qualifying in day two. Day one, I was just like, I'm here to have fun, and I blasted that track as hard as I could. <laughs> so I noticed last year, year, not last year, but two years ago, last event, Jason Rona did that, too. Yeah. Instead of jumping the jump, he hit, he was full throttle right up to it. Then he almost broke, got over the backside and just gunned down the backside of it into the corner, which was pretty cool mm -hmm. to watch him do that. So I just aired it out. That's just kind of my style. It almost, well, it did get me with the pro C where I got all kind of crazy coming off the land. I was trying to turn in the air and. You landed. had a heck of a save yeah. right there, though. You kind of landed on two wheels and brought it back down. The problem is, by that point, the other guy was already across the finish line. He didn't make a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> he was fast all weekend. Um, Hayden was fast all weekend with his uh, freestyle trucks. But um, So what do you think of the track overall? Because that's what we ran for Digger's Dungeon. It was different in some ways. I mean, it's just a, t a figure eight. Yeah, but, I, li I like the track. My one gripe and complaint was the far corner. You couldn't really see to get around it to get an exit out of it. But everybody had to race the same track. So it's really not an excuse, to be honest with you. You just whoever got around the corner best got got the straightaway better. And uh, it bit me a few times. I think it bit me in Pro Mod the second day. I kind of caught the edge of that jump a couple of times. I think you drove over the top of it. I did the same yep. thing the day before in the LMC I went class. Too far if I was trying to be careful. And then I, yeah. went, one of them, I went like way over into the other side. <laughs> Hey, that's the sound like, strategy too, though. I mean, you go over, you cut the other guy off, make him hit the brakes, and then you can get on the throttle. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this is basically what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, you don't know. And, and because it's it was so tall, you don't know um, once you go behind it which way your car's facing. And so either you keep turning and come over the top like I did, or you clip the edge of it and yeah. get on two wheels, or you go straight out too far. It, it definitely was something you had to learn, but... Because of it being loose, you never knew. Yeah, that was the other thing, too. We ran out of water on the second day, so it was kind of really hard to keep the track moisturized. And uh, just so slick, by the time we got through to, I think it was semifinals of LMT, that track was pretty much just a dry dirt surface and had all marbles on top of it. It was incredibly difficult to keep your truck straight, and that's where the Rapid X really showed itself, I thought. Yeah. Yeah, and then they said they'd never run it on anything but like the carpet or indoor before, and that's what it was really 
made for because it's so low it doesn't traction roll very easily yeah but it also slid so well on the the loose dirt Mm -hmm. it just cornered they could push through a corner whereas everybody else it seemed like they would get on the throttle a little bit and the rear wanted to spin out with them they were pushing and on a track like that that's going to help you out a lot yeah yeah so you did really well in retro both days right yeah i won both days win both days yeah in fact, I was so bummed because I was bummed, but I wasn't bummed for you because <laughs> you had rolled over and were out. But because both we had to have in that setup of brackets a fastest loser, that we had two of them that were DQs. And yeah. so you guys I had a bad bounce, and I think it was the second round with my Bigfoot truck. And I just I flat out lost with my digger truck the, the first round. Second round, bad bounce with Bigfoot, got up on two wheels, and it rolled over. Uh, I think the highlight of that is actually in Troy's Hobby's videos uh, for that. He had that video on, or that race on tape, and I was watching it, and I'm like, man, you had all the races. You got to get that one on tape. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it bounces and it rolls over, but I got fortunate enough to come back and race for the fast loser, which I won, yeah. and then took on to win the bracket. So those, those reprieves really help you out every now and then. Oh, man. Yeah, I've had it one time where I – Use the fastest loser all the way to the top as well, and it's just like yes. But um, yeah, I was I was kicking. I'm like when I when you were gone, and I knew there was a fastest loser. I'm like, well, he rolled, yeah. So no chance of him coming back and winning, and he did. <laughs> I was actually happy for you. It it's always cool when you get that kind of a reprieve, and your your trucks were the fastest hands down all weekend for retro. I mean, TQing and all that kind of stuff. Um, you just master over that log yeah. stack as we call it. I You hit it with speed and jump it. I it seemed like it. nobody else could really hit it and get over it with the rear tires, whereas I was hitting it and just kind of jumping over it. Yep. And, uh, those J-Concepts regulators, when you have them set up with the correct, the shocks are correct and everything, they can handle every single jump you throw at them. And yep. uh, that, that jump just seemed like it was incredibly easy for the trucks to get over. Yeah. For your trucks to get over. For my trucks, yes. Yeah, and nobody <laughs> else's. <laughs> hey, you my, had a couple of hits out there that were really good off of it too. Whenever you could hit it, kind of, I had to me, I could hit it. Really I could hard. hit it straight and land on all fours. It seems like everybody else, if they would hit it with their right front and then climb it with the left, they could get over it really well too. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't the same speed you carried through it, which is what was impressive watching it just blast mm-hmm. over it. And you did the same with the um, going into the box which now has crush cars in it but before that used to be like our mud pit or whatever yeah um and have corn or whatever but now they have the the cars in it but if i hit that with speed i'm i'm, I'm back flipping and you almost was, did on day one if i remember right yeah i did <laughs> yeah and well i landed upside down i was done but almost back flipped uh but yours will hit it and basically jump it yeah, and land I, there were a couple out. of hits I had on it where I would jump and land tailgate into it like a really retro looking sky wheelie into it and come out. There were other times I would hit it and I would try and hit it just like I did that jump we were just talking about, like kind of like the wood jump. I'd hit it, get the front tires to carry, land, and kind of bounce out of it. And uh, that seemed to be the best strategy. Okay. Yeah, mine is just I have to slow and then push as I get up to it because otherwise. But you lose those little fraction of a second retro and that's that's where you lose so uh that's how i rolled it the first time is against you i believe and i just knew i gotta hit this hard because he's gonna hit it fast and um (laughs) that was all she wrote (laughs) on the back but um so what did you think that was in the that was the grandma versus meemaw matchup right (laughs) yeah (laughs) i don't know the meemaw is that like no, we were just we were joking back and forth because I had the grandma digger oh, there and I also had digger too. Yeah. So your truck's nickname was not grandma, it was Mima. <laughs> okay, Mima. That's like we have Nana, right? For yeah, grandma. Nana or Mima or yeah. Okay, I got it. Yeah. So it's, it's a different kid <laughs> version. It's a different version of grandma. grandma. You're the alternate universe yeah. version of grandma. We'll put it that way. Got it. <laughs> I understand now. <laughs> and, and yours is more classic to the original grandma, so. I can understand why mine would get the Mima. Um, what did you think about you went all LMTs, which shocked me. I did not know yeah. that you had gone strictly LMT for your pro mod. Tell yeah, us I about did, why. I did that because I truly believe that once somebody gets those differentials dialed in and can understand 
what uh, what diff fluid you want to run, how to get them shimmed right and everything. I truly believe those can dominate a pro mod class. I think I don't think it's going to necessarily kick out guys with clawed busters, but it's going to give those guys some runs. Same guys with uh, the Axial SMT-10s that are all modded out. I think the LMT can certainly hang in there. Uh, proof of the pudding in that actually is my Bigfoot truck that I had out there. It's going to be soon to be Samson. But uh, Trigger King had released a video a couple days ago, Pro Mod Racing Class, our first bracket. I got to the semifinals with the uh, LMT. I, I lost to a clawbuster Buster because I messed up in the corner. But at the same time, that truck was so smooth and so dialed all the way around the track. That was kind of the, the race that I was like, you know what? I set these trucks up just right. I'm, I'm pretty positive I can go out there and either win or come really close to winning some Pro Mod brackets here pretty quick. And then when I went out to that, that uh, Horizon Hobby RC Fest, it seems like that was a really shaft heavy uh, class as well. I don't think I saw one Claude Buster racing in that class the entire weekend in Pro Mod. I don't think there was. And so actually in our no limit races, we don't have that many people that do run it in Pro Mod. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of SMTs. Uh, we have a few freestyle RCs, myself, and I think maybe one or two more. Um but a lot of SMT 10 builds that are, you know, off of those axles at least, but custom chassis and, and that kind of thing. But yeah, so we don't have, there's a couple people that show up not as frequently the last year that would run the Claude Busters, but it wasn't huge. Mm -hmm. I know Showdown and Showtime, and they have more people that run the Claude Busters. And then um, also like the Michigan guys run a lot of, Claude based stuff or did yeah but michigan guys were the, like the fastest with the claw busters but I, I i just like i said i truly believe you set an lmt up right it can dominate a pro mod class and yeah. uh, i think we saw that this weekend that these trucks were really catching up i mean the only other competition out there was the freestyle rc trucks yeah they won the weekend but the lmts were right there day two qualifying i qualified at an 1105 i think it was and zimmerman was at a 10 9 8 something so i was right there with him right there. with an yeah. almost stock lmt taking on a uh rapid x chassis yeah and so yeah i don't even remember what the lmt class was turning for their uh uh for the you know whatever the, the stock class LMT was. Yeah, the, the spec class, I want to say, was like either anywhere from an 11.0 to an 11.8 was really quick. So that's basically pro mod speeds again. Yeah. And those are pretty stock trucks. Yeah, and I had stock electronics in the trucks too. I think everybody and else did that class as well. Yeah. Uh, no, not all of them. No, John <laughs> Williams ran, he was running a hobby wing that could do 4S. It was geared different, or it wasn't geared different, but it was a different KV. Okay. So if you weren't running 4S, you you were slow. So 4S with it was basically like 3S with the motor we're running, I guess. And I think okay. 4S is what the the it tops out at is what the class is. So, and that just is just to allow because people bought the kits, and then if you stuck in a motor that was, you know, a lower KV than the one that was, or you know, bigger motor that needed more power to make it do the yeah. same as the smaller ones, but. Um, yeah, so it wasn't that much faster, his trucks, um, from what I recall, because at, at some point you go any faster and you're losing traction. So, <laughs> yeah, by the way, he's a cool dude too. I got to talk with him a lot. He, uh, he impressed me. He was incredibly quick out there. I don't think I beat him all weekend. <laughs> yeah. In the LMT class. Oh, what about yeah. uh, pro mod? No, no, I don't think I beat him in pro mod either. He was he's okay. incredibly quick. He's quick. Good dude. Yep. Yeah, so we have to. I always had to race him. Um, he, I don't know if you know, but he's the one that really got me into RC. Yeah, I overheard you say that while we were there. Yeah, but um, so he used to work at a place called Debbie's RC World when I first got into it, and he forced me to have to work on my trucks. So I wanted to just bring them up there and have them fix them when I break them. And he's like, "Dude, yeah. you can do this." I tell that to a couple of my Monster Jam buddies every now and then. They'll take it to the hobby shop, and the hobby shop will charge them to fix it. And I'm like, "It's a heck of a lot cheaper if you do it yourself." Yeah, and it's actually, not that hard. It, it's not that hard to do most of it. Um, it really just comes into learning it. It's like anything, like diff fluids and all that can be overwhelming mm -hmm. to think about because there's all these ratios and you know different things and what how you should do front center. But you know, but if somebody get just tells you what you should be running, it's more learning what's needed versus how 
to actually install it, right? Yeah. If somebody gives you a baseline on how to do something, you kind of know to go up or down from there. Yeah, but just That's changing what I kind of learned years ago isn't that hard. Yeah. It's more than knowing what to, to put in. That can be overwhelming, I guess. Yeah. Still is for me because I haven't those race guys that just do it like every every race and like in between races or whatever, they're like, oh, I need to tune this different. Like that still blows me away that that they can get in there and tune something that fast and get it back out in the next round. That's something that I think you're going to see here maybe in the next year or so with monster trucks too. Guys or even just having front diff and rear diff or center diff and changing out fluids in between rounds or having a separate one already ready to go and drop in. Yeah, exactly. You're going to, like I said, with the LNT, that's something that you can do. It's pretty quick. A lot quicker than getting in and working on a, a cloud buster. Actually. I had that down to a science. The cloud busters? The cloud buster. I could pull apart a clod. If I law, if I won him first round in Trigger King, that was a bracket a few years ago. I had a really close race. I won, nosedived, and broke an axle tube. And I had it to ready to go next round to be able wow. to compete and keep going. It was, uh, it was a lot of work and it's a real quick job, but you got to be able to, you got to be, had to be able to do it. Now yeah. you, uh, you unscrew four bolts, pull the top of that LNT housing off. You can get in there and get into your diff real quick. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Once you take the drive shaft off. Yeah, you got to do that too. But so extra grub screw. But yeah, I mean, even still, that's not that hard. A clod buster, no. you split the whole gear case apart. Then yeah. you got to worry about getting all those gears back in there, making sure all those bearings are in there and everything. With the LNT, yeah. like you said, take the drive shaft out, pull the top of the gear case or the gearbox off, reach in, pull the diff out, fix whatever you need to fix, put it back in, tighten eight bolts, you're good to go. So you weren't running the CPE ones that bolted around the outside i was uh but the problem is with that i have uh what was they were called zrp braces up top uh, and the only uh, way that you can get th those like get those off is or put, the put them in there you gotta you gotta put a bolt on the inside on one of them so i've got three that i can pull off real quick and then i have one on the inside that i had to be able to get into to get there to get that off ouch so it's still i still was forced to yank the whole gear case apart but what do you think, um, racing wise, anything that you could tell people about the event, you know, takeaways or whatever that you have from the RC Fest racing? It was cool because there was a few people that did come and just race LMT with us. Yeah. And I got to tell you, it's, it was just, it was laid back. It was, you could sit back, relax, talk. Uh, it was just, it was nice. I'll put it that way. It was a nice change of pace from an actual trigger king race day and i'm not throwing trigger king under the bus or anything like that but every now and then a trigger king race day is go 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 here it was all right run a race take a breather for a second run a race take a breather for a second you don't really have to worry about messing with your trucks all that much because truthfully with the dirt jumps you're not really hurting your vehicle or flying as far as you would off the wood jumps that we have Yep. I mean, you could roll those jumps versus skying them out. You didn't really have to go in there and look and check and nut and bolt everything after every round like we do. So it was nice. It was a nice change of pace. Plus, I really enjoyed getting to race a few different people that I don't normally race against, like yourself, Joey, Josh, those guys, freestyle yeah. RC guys, Hayden. I'd never raced him before. Yep. Yeah, that was that was fun to be able to do that for sure. That You know, there's people there I didn't race that often. You know, some of the guys even from freestyle, Vern and them. Um, and then Charlie and Chuck came down from Michigan mm -hmm. and raced at this. And I think they were there maybe last in 2019 too. I might've raced them before then, but, but yeah, the only, the only thing that I would say, cause I, I think it went really well too. Like I said, and I was able to get and do other things this time, which was good. The only thing I might say is that the LMT class, I would probably qualify and race back to back. I would have done that too. And let, because there's, there's like outsiders that are coming in with that new, the new hotness of the LMT that want to just try out racing, but they don't want to stay by the monster truck thing the whole time of the event. Cause they might yeah. have some other things and that's all they're really coming to do. And most of the events was like a quick one and done. Like you did the, um, the sumo, it was done within 15 minutes of starting. Yeah. Uh, the crawler course, that was a kind of get in line and, you ran through one, then you went and stood in the line, got through the other, and you were done. Um, mm -hmm. Quick, you know, you didn't necessarily wait to know when it was going to be the after qualifying, like when am I going to race again or whatever. Um, but other than that, you know, we were all ready to just camp out and hang out and 
spend the day sitting there under our tents, you know, talking trucks and racing and, and yeah, exactly. game, right. That's what we were there for. Um, so, but for the people that are coming for the event and want to do everything, it would be cool to have a class that was, here's what it is to race in, yeah. in a quick 30 minute nutshell of, of that qualify, get your spot on the bracket or even randomize it and just straight yeah. Them. One thing that I think that would have been nice that they would have had, they had a lot of try me booths out there as far as rock crawlers and stuff like that goes. Oh. I think it would have been a smart idea during downtime for monster trucks. Had we had a couple of L and T's out there, maybe two or three, then just let people run them back and forth on that track and yep. try that truck out. I think that would have been cool. Could use it as our intermission show, if you will. <laughs> yep. And there was a few people I said could try mine and I didn't actually get to let them do it because of the way that it was, or I wasn't there or whatever. Um, but yeah, that would have been good. Cause they wanted to try driving an LMT for the first time. And I was totally open and willing to let them run mine. Um, but I, but it wasn't an open time to do that, but yeah, mm -hmm. that would have been cool to do a try me. Yeah. I think, uh, I think our racing started at either 10 or 11 o'clock an hour before that, have a little try me booth open up there for somebody to come and run an LMT for a little while I read on the calendar while we're taking a break in between rounds or something like that. Have some, have two or three more of them out there running them, whether it's our trucks or whether horizon just brings a couple of trucks over there and somebody's in charge of them and charges the batteries for them and make sure they're ready to go. I think that would have been great. And yep. I think that would have brought more people over to the monster truck track. Cause there was a couple of times where we would be doing something and there, there wasn't exactly a lot of people over there. There were the other times where we had a big crowd. Yep. Standing at the fence. There was, you're right. You're right. That is a actually a good suggestion that I didn't even think about. There you go. Greg Sopa, if you're listening. Yeah. A try me LMT <laughs> or even an SMT 10. Honestly, yeah, bring that over there too. bring an SMT 10 over there. Let them try it. SMTs on one side, LMTs on the other. Let them go. Yep. Tracks big enough. Yeah. Cause usually they, I mean, a lot of the stuff that they try me is lower speed because some of the try me people have never run an RC before. Yeah, and they're going to want to blast where, it. <laughs> that's where you, you, the SMT would probably be a safer. That bet. and the LMT's got the thing on the radio where you can go from 100 to 75 to 50 throttle yep. too. So, yep. <clears throat> excuse me. Yep. Don't show them it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's a, a good call. I would have even opened mine up to let people do that if we'd done something like that. Mm hmm. I think it would have been great. There were a couple of people after the long jump and stuff that kind of walked over kind of by where my pit was, your pit was, and we're just kind of looking at things and they're like, Oh, so how does this work? Do we, do we, who do we talk to to try these? And I'm like, these are personally owned vehicles, but uh, I'm sure if you ask, I'd be willing to let you drive one of mine, just come back at X time or whatever. Never yeah, had anybody to come back though. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough to get people to come back. Yeah, for sure. When they're right there and wanting that, Long jump. Talk about that. That was awesome. Greg Sopa killed it on that thing. 261 oh, feet with whatever car that was. I don't know what it was, but man, that thing I flew think. like an airplane through the air. Doug Welker had a really good run too. I mean, there were just, I don't know all of the names of the people competing, but there were some cars out there that I just, I wouldn't have expect to go as far as they did, but man, they took off like jets off this ramp they well, had out there. And we're looking at some like uh, only 140. Eh, 120. That's because the first day Greg Sopa did 219, right? So yeah. I think the first night but 100 the ones that are going 100 feet 80 feet that they're still flying like <laughs> and let's, really point, let's point this out too sopa missed the jump the first time on his first pass on the second day still went 170 feet yeah 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 that was nuts oh yeah he just barely well, caught the edge of that jump and he almost got one dude that was standing out there <laughs> yeah wasn't there a guy uh in 2019 that got nailed by one of those things by peeking yeah. his head out from behind the jump yeah, he picked his ankle out, but he was running the gun. He was running the the speed gun. Mm -hmm. the, that's the thing is, it used to be a speed and long gun or long jump. So he had a radar gun poking out behind the thing. And so he's crouching, so his leg is out. But he saw it come at him. He ducked in, but he didn't pull his leg in. He just Ooh. pulled the gun and everything in. Yeah, 100 mile per hour RC car to the shin. Boom. Yeah, I think it was clocked at 99. <laughs> um. But yeah, that was everybody scaling. Um, with uh, he does the the scale blog for mm -hmm. uh, Big Squid. 
But um, yeah, he got hit. Um, they were both out there again this weekend too. It was kind of cool to see those guys. I come over there. They had a they had a monster truck on their display table over there before Doug come the next day. It was a Bigfoot SMT10, almost yeah. bone stock Bigfoot. And I drove mine over there. I was like, man, that's a nice Bigfoot. And he goes, no, that's a nice Bigfoot. <laughs> Stand at my truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Jeremy uh, Griffith. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's scaling. I is what I said before, but yeah, it's Jeremy. Yeah, he's the one that took it to the ankle. But yeah, he he's got a pretty nice looking Bigfoot. Yeah, it's a really nice looking truck. Interior you know, wise like and it. all that, he really decked it out with uh, scale. I mean, everybody scaling is a name, right? So yeah, I mean, you got to be scale. He's totally scale. But um, I thought that the crawler course looked amazing. It was actually really fun. The f- the jets flying by. I mean, there were some big ones, and one of them was going. Oh, yeah. There was one of them out there had to be doing every bit of about 150 miles per hour right next to where we were pitted. Yeah. Uh, the one that one that always got me on day one, you couldn't, I didn't, wasn't necessarily listening to the announcing and everything over there, but every now and then you'd hear a really loud boom, and you're like, what in the heck was that? Yeah. There was people going around saying that somebody blew up a motor on one of those planes and whatnot. And I'm like, I don't even know what the heck this was. It wasn't until we actually sat down and watched the show after our racing on Sun or uh, Saturday that they were talking about how one of them was dropping like a fake missile and they were hitting a button and making the, the boom. Second, and I'm like, that explains the, the boom the entire weekend. <laughs> yeah. It, it made me jump out of my skin a few times. Oh, yeah. Like, we weren't expecting it all. Fire we're, and- <laughs> we're concentrating on something else. And the next thing you hear. Boom! One of them went <laughs> while they were starting the race, and one of the guys took off on green. The other one just didn't. Like, yeah, he was like, "What in the world?" It. Yeah, <laughs> like, what? I think they had to rerun that race. But yeah, it definitely would throw you off. Oh yeah, that would have made me jump the gun. Like, I'd have probably pulled the trigger when I heard the boom. I'd have probably red lighted or something crazy. That's when you need to insert the sound effect. Here comes the yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or yeah, some kind of a. a a warning would have been good. All right, he's going to drop a bomb. But well, actually, they, they were they were they were saying it, but we yeah. we were all dialed in trying to race, and the next thing you know, yeah. boom, off in the corner. I, I remember complaining that they weren't, but then I heard them when we sat down and watched the yeah. show. After. The fireworks were amazing. Oh, the fireworks were awesome. Being that close to a fireworks show too it was cool. I never yeah. been that close to one. It was right there, like it was almost right across the runway from where we were. Yeah racing so they made us move back a little bit but we were still right up on that thing oh yeah uh the one thing that was really cool to me that i didn't get to see the first time around was ring of fire oh with yeah all the, all the aircraft flying through the fire and everything like that. that was that was something i was not expecting that and i love the fact they were giving the kids the control to the fire so so guy would fly through they'd try and get the plane i thought that was fun oh i, I enjoyed that. that that was a good part of the show um did they have thing, any cars jumping through it i i, I didn't didn't see have a any view i didn't see any here um because i was still tearing something down because that would have been an excellent photo of some of my trucks jumping through there i would have done that yeah the, the time before they were jumping through while and trying to get planes flying through and hitting them with the cars and all that it was crazy mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really catch any cars jumping through there, but I did see a lot of that. The helicopter exhibition too that they put on when it got really dark, and they had the guy with the the helicopter with the lights all attached to it. Oh my goodness, that was astonishing. I loved that. That was fun to watch. He took it through the ring of fire too. Yeah, he took it through the ring. Jeez. Yeah, and but they even hit that like because so much of it's about the wind around and the way it's pushing wind, and then when they hit that uh, that fire. It has lift, you know, so it's shocking that it didn't take it out. But um, oh yeah, so impressive. The yeah, um, when you're flying like that and you've got that many years of experience, like some of those guys had. The one jet that was there that I heard them really describe, I think it was an X Horizon employee that had it had twenty thousand okay. dollars invested into this jet, and just watching that thing take off, you're like, man, if you wreck that, oh, that's twenty grand. <laughs> down the tube any of the big ones crash yeah they never did they never crash those those Which really ones like that, that I've been i don't know smaller shows where like guys cry mm-hmm. when they crash the big ones oh yeah because like, landing and it seems little but when it really the damage is so much you know that it was just the landing a little little bit of a blump on the landing and nose over and you know, lots of damage and you're just like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you've got to go and out and try and rebuild that. 
Yeah. If I had something like that in my garage, it would never come out and be like, yep, that's 20 grand sitting over there and it's a nice paperweight. Yeah. <laughs> None of my cars are like that. Yeah. I, I I'm too much of a guy that's going to go out and beat the tar out of his stuff. I watched the Ari build <laughs> off of the double at the basher. Oh, I watched it. I was fortunate enough to see all the eight minutes of footage that you lost before you broke the truck. But I still bashed it with it. You just couldn't line up the the double mm -hmm. with two wheel drive. No, so you can't. The There's of it. so much power in that truck of yours that when you hit the throttle, if you don't have four wheel drive, the rear just wants to spin you straight into a donut. Yeah. Yeah, so it was very just controlled, and, but you needed all the power to get over that double. So the track was really big. Like the yeah. Bachelor Park was really big. The jumps, you had to have some speed to get over them for sure. There were some that a lot of people had trouble with, the doubles in the back side. Oh, yeah. Um, you had to whip that corner in order to have the speed to get over it. But um, I would probably... If I were to build that, I would probably do more of the like the one in the middle where it was like the the square where you could hit it. From yeah, scale it down just a little bit. So yeah. the other thing too is is the, well, a lot of jumps behind one. that big one that you were talking about. A lot of jumps back there were small enough that you could have a lot of fun back there. That big one right there, if you're standing back there and you can't see on that other side, you don't know what you're landing on jumping off that big one. You can't see around it. It's yeah. kind of hard, and I imagine there might have been a couple of people that were banging trucks back there because they just can't see around those two big obstacles right there. Yeah, I hit a guy. I saw that. <laughs> you see my comments on that, too. Wayne, <laughs> right across the face. Yeah, I commented with a gif that says KO. <laughs> yeah, it looked like it, the way it stumbled. I mean, I thought, like, I just killed a guy, you know, when I saw yeah. it happen in real, t in real time. I'm just like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> But you could see it happening, and I watched and I listened to the audio. I'm already apologizing before it hits him because you can see it turn when it takes off, and there's no mm -hmm. stopping at that point. But um, yeah, he was really cool about it. It could have been, it could have been like real fisticuffs after that. Oh yeah, if he hadn't been cool about it. Like, Years ago, uh, Colby Marshall set his camera. I mean, he's got a a big camera that he goes to all the monster blog shows with and whatnot runs in TRC by the way. So shout out to Colby, but he stuck his camera right next to a jump. I mean, he's leaning against the jump and I took off right next to him. And as soon as the truck leaves the ramp, all you can hear him say is, Oh God, <laughs> real loud. Like he, uh, I got that close to him. So oh my gosh. Yeah. I hit two people in the head. Now my son <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Wayne. So I should I, probably be more careful. I've hit a guy in the ankle before, but that was on purpose and he deserved it. So. <laughs> yeah. <there you> go. <laughs> but no, that park was, it was awesome. I'm glad that they stepped it up. Um, oh yeah. From last was awesome. year. It was, it was really awesome. Even if one, thing I, one thing I regret not going to see was some of the fifth scale racing that they had going on yeah. over there. I didn't get a chance to go over there. Uh, some of the eight scale stuff they had going on the very far end of the property. Uh, yeah. Gonna make a point next time to go be able to go over there and see some of that because it looked like it'd be a lot of fun. But they were in the same bag as we were, right? So they sat and raced all day just like we did. Yeah, that's kind of why they came and went. You know, was for um, to participate in that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's some awesome fifth scale, and that was just because they already had a fifth scale race that weekend already mm -hmm. on the books with that track, and so they just kind of incorporated that all into the weekend as well as with you know, adding the other eight scale nitro and electric and that. Yeah. And I, I kind of actually liked how far back the track was because you could hear the motors and everything running over there, but they weren't distracting to you. Right. They were so far back back there that it wasn't really messing with anybody over in our area while we were racing or anything like that. Yep. Did you see the Raminators running when they were there? There was two. Yes. Of them. Yeah. At least uh, two. Adam Munz's Raminator is probably my favorite Raminator paint scheme of all time. I've really always cool. loved it. Uh, it's a really cool truck. He had that out running it on um, He's Friday. Got it dialed in. What's that? He's got it pretty dialed in for a stock truck. Yeah. Yes, he does. Uh, I think the monster truck experience he has helps right there. Uh, he's He's been around the monster truck game a long time. He knows the colors really well. He knows the Ram trucks really well. I'm going to throw him, throw him out there a little bit. It was years ago when he was still a really small kid. He went to the world finals and he took his own little photo book there. And he had my name and a couple other guys' name as photo credits written in the book. All right. <laughs> But yeah, Adam's a cool dude. I'm glad he's doing what he loves out there. It was really cool to see his truck run. Uh, I'm not sure who it was the next day that had the Raminator out there with the big Deontay. tube pipe on it. Deontay was running the 
Well, it used to be the, the RC Max, but now they're called like Taylor RC or something like that. Okay. You have to change your name because the name Max is too close to a, a very big company. Oh, that, that company certain that one made. company out there that also Dude. rhymes with tracks. Yeah. <laughs> and Max. And, you know, they, I, I kind of get it. I mean, they've got Max in so much of their stuff. T-Max, E-Max, you know, I get it. But it's just like any time try, somebody tries to copyright something with the name Monster in it, yep. a certain certain energy drink company gets really mad at that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had um, my shirts. Anytime I try and put them on to, to Teespring, they got blocked because I said Monster Trucks. Mm-hmm. Because the word Monster was there, it was flagged as being copyrighted by Monster Energy. Yep. And so I just had to say trucks. But who's going to search for trucks when they really want to search for Monster Trucks? Exactly. It really kills. They they eventually let it in. I had to go, th- it was, but I never did it again because it was too much work to go through the yeah. process to get him to approve it. And so once I had the one approved, I'm like, not doing that again. I just know not to say monster. So it is what it is, you know. Unfortunately, <laughs> brand to a degree. Um, I feel like lawyers take it to the nth degree. But yes, they do, especially YouTube lawyers for yeah. certain songs that you have no control over playing in the background. I think that's dumb myself, but anyway. Yeah. Yep. We, well, we even dealt with that this weekend, like yes. off the music for long jump. Cause they're going to go live and things like that, which makes sense. I, as a YouTuber <laughs> get it and understand. I, I don't ever do videos like trigger King. because yeah. I Can't. Yeah. And we get flack a lot. We get flack a lot from people that will comment every now and then. Where's the music for freestyle? Where's the music? Well, our club makes money off of YouTube revenue. It helps us keep our stuff up to date. It gets, Heck, it bought us new jumps a couple of years ago. Uh, yep. We had to pay somebody to make all those jumps, and we had the guy do it, and it was basically YouTube revenue that paid for it. Yep. If we have music playing in the background, we can't monetize that, and we can't have as cool of a presentation as we do. Yep, you lose the presentation. Mm-hmm. So what I would probably do is I would, if I were running one, because I have a channel, I would just download the music that I'm legally allowed to play and just have that be run as a soundtrack below it. Yeah. But the main thing is like you lose the commentary, you lose all this stuff, the sounds, people, oh, you lose all of that. You lose everything that makes it exciting. If you, yep, if you uh, kill it and just like what I have to do is I literally just do a music video to music. Yeah. And I try to just leave the original audio in and just cover it so you can't hear. But if you really listen, there's like this, it's, it's just hard because you have to find something that's kind of the same key. So it's not too bad, but I try to leave some of the sound in by just burying the music with other music, which is yeah. not the way to do it. But the other way is just kill the audio completely and then only have music and only use what you can for a highlight basically. And then, yeah. So you lose the whole, you know, one, you know, you can't, go down the bracket and show you know moving on and all that yeah it's not fun to just music to have that so yeah that was the other thing too that was awesome about the weekend was having some music i we don't i don't get to freestyle to it very often i could freestyle to bad to the bone for the first time in probably four or five years yeah that was fun yep getting to take a grave digger truck out with that song i haven't done it in a while and i really enjoyed it yeah that was awesome Sometimes I just put them up and just say, whatever, I take the hit. Yeah. You know, they don't actually, it doesn't hurt you. It just, you can't make any money when it does. Yeah. It just, it. It, it'll actually mute it. If there's some companies that don't want their music on at all, and it'll just mute that whole section. And that's weird. Um, cause I, yeah, I used to run at the world finals. I did it where I ran a live stream, the whole thing. So people could watch, man, I got so many hits on, on <laughs> thing and eventually years later i still get an alert being like oh we just noticed this song was in here we're, we're gonna delete the audio for that whole area i'm like whatever okay <laughs> <laughs> i didn't make money on it anyway and you know but that's not what it's all about anyway exactly and that whole event was what it was all about there were so many kids mm-hmm. running up and down out there and to me that's what it's all about is putting a smile yep. on a kid's face putting a smile even on a bigger kid's face an adult's face putting a smile on their face, bringing the hobby out to people, exposing the hobby to more people. Yep. That's what Horizon RC Fest was all about. And they did an excellent job of it, putting it out there for everybody to see. And I really, I enjoyed myself. That whole weekend was so much fun. Yeah. So we haven't talked about it yet. And I just thought about it because I was thinking about 
the kids and all that. And that was really cool. I actually have somewhere in video where I mentioned it. However, I'd given my camera to the RC sailors at one point, and I didn't realize I'd just come from freestyle. Or no, what did I come from? I came from something where I had it in slow motion. Mm-hmm. So there's no audio when you record in slow motion. <laughs> so there's all this stuff of us talking and do it. There's no audio, which is a bummer. <laughs> um, but the slow motion is what made me think about is the, um, and, I'm, and I think it was for the mud trucks is when I put it in slow motion. Mm-hmm. And um, you went through the mud. I bought a car specifically there to run through the mud and I'd never ran it through the mud. I'd never got a chance to do the mud pit. Yeah. But you were smarter and you just took something you already brought through the mud. Yeah. I, uh, I built basically rebuilt. I sold my original grandma digger truck and I thought, you know what? I got into the claw buster. Was that? Why would you do that? Cause I so, wanted, I wanted to fund another regulator build. Uh, That's the reason that my digger two is a regulator because I wanted to fund that build. But I had a stock clod just kind of sitting in the back. I had enough parts that I could build one, so I just built one. Basically built it like I did an older truck that I had. I cut a lot of the ch- chassis parts out from underneath of it. it it's a race-ready truck. Troy raced it on uh, Friday mm-hmm. before it went to the mud. He raced it out there in the retro class, and it ran fairly well. Um, yeah, for the first time it ran, he was pushing me. Yeah, that, that truck, it, it works. You can take yeah. a stock clod truck out there in retro and make it work if you know what you're doing with the truck. And you can create the suspension travel that it needs. So the chassis is not constantly banging off the top of those gear cases. But uh, I saw that mud pit back there and I saw my grandma sitting there and I'm like, you know what? I built that truck to have some fun with. And that just looks like it's fun and it's going to look awesome on a video. That's why I was like, hey, Tony, come over here. I got something I want to show you. Yeah, you got it muddy. Oh, it it added every bit of like four pounds to the truck. And you couldn't see it on video, but I saw it in person. There was smoke coming out of the rear motor. Yeah. At the end. I've turned the truck on since then. And the rear motor, it's, I don't think it's completely gone, but it's got a little bit of a squeal to it. So I think I need to get oh, in yeah. there and uh, stick a little oil in it and just see if I can, if I can make it work. If not, I, I got spare motors. They're 27 turns. They're a fairly cheap motor anyway. Yeah. And it could have just been that, you know, the the heat of it was hitting the water and, you know, more like steam than smoke. But yeah, and I might have been I might have been guilty of holding the trigger, the trigger on the throttle for a little bit too long in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was soupy. It was um, that one side it, was really it, soupy. The left side of that there. mud pit was real soupy. Yeah, we threw in a whole bunch of extras down below one to give people traction if they did sink in, uh, but also to send them off course so they wouldn't just straight line through it it had mm-hmm. it would bounce you and you'd have to steer and all that so there was boards underneath there there was rocks under there there's all kinds of stuff and a mm-hmm. few of them stuck out you know to yeah there was a couple of like the the first pass that i made through there I was like wow this truck's running really straight and then all of a sudden it curved to the right really hard and i'm like oh crap yeah <laughs> i had to get on the get on the brake a little bit and turn it to the left to get it to go all the way through the mud but uh, i tell you that that right there put a big smile on my face. It was just something I could have fun with a truck that I could go through and the truck that I'm going to end up beating up a lot. Yeah. It's one of those so, totally worth it moments, right? Exactly. Completely worth it. Completely <laughs> worth everything. I enjoyed it. Everybody wanted to see the cleanup video. Right, I don't know why you want to see the cleanup video of that. It's like a three minute hose job. Ta-da. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, he took it over the hose and that's why we had so much dust the next day. Yeah. Yeah, just kidding. They refilled yeah, that. I'm the one that ran us out of water. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, they had um two tanks there. In hindsight, it would probably be nice to have two waters for the event, and then bring in the weed killer after. Yeah, we sprayed the track yeah. down once with the weed killer, and everybody paid for that for about the next hour. Yeah, you could really smell it. And a lot of people didn't want to run their trucks in it. And I don't blame them, but yeah. Unless your name's Isaac Ankrum, who uh, just waits for it to completely dump out and then just drive your LMT straight through it. <laughs> <laughs> His truck looked like my grandma digger afterwards. I got to looking at that. I was like, gosh, dang. After was, the I didn't know it was there. Out? Do what? After the weed killer went out? Yeah, yeah. he drained, well, they drained that and he was out there piddling. And when he jumped off of something, he landed in it and just drove straight out of it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, because it was open on the bottom and they hadn't shut it off, right? Yeah. 
yeah. it was still draining and he was out there just piddling around with his truck and oh my next goodness. thing i know i look over there and i'm like oh look he's mud bog <laughs> oh my goodness um i'm trying to think anything else from the weekend stand out crawl of course was awesome i didn't get to see any of the tractor pulling you know what i didn't even know there was tractor pulling there until you just said it yeah there was tractor pulling across yeah. from the basher park i didn't even know it figure eight. Oh, so go back to figure eight um the guys from freestyle took their trucks over to do the figure eight they were trying adam munz was calling for people there wasn't a whole lot of people volunteering one of them went over i think he was just going to test his truck out during it and then all the rest went and i was over there I'm like this is going to be awesome hold on and i went and got oh, yeah. my, my lmt um oh i stood and watched most of that which is a cheater truck for an event like that because the whole thing is you got to knock the cars out. So they either got a turtle and whatever, but the LMT, there's no turtling the LMT. You can, no, you, you can bring the LMT back. So I try not to, like, if it was just, I just never let it stop momentum, but um, at least I don't feel like I did to where it was like stopped. And I would have just been like, all right, I'm over. But everybody, when they were over was fighting to try and get back on their wheels. So it wouldn't have been, wrong of me to keep trying with mine until i got it over but it is it's unstoppable when it comes to keeping it down yeah that so. truck just grabs there was one instance in my freestyle where the truck was completely flipped over and i just gagged the throttle as hard as i could and the front caught flipped that truck right back over and it was gone yep so let's talk about freestyle for a second and we'll, we'll be done after this but freestyle i went first I, I shouldn't have because I, I went to hit all the spots that I'd hit the first day and everything was wore out. Like yeah, what was easy backflips when we built it were gone because yeah. everything had been so dry and just washed out, like broke down um, that I went for all those spots and I couldn't get it to do anything. You, however, found a new spot and you double backflipped yeah, I, uh, I kind of looked at the track beforehand and I saw one spot that was still a really good edge on it. Yep. Uh, so there was that spot and then the backside of one of the turn berms they had back over there was another spot you could really get a lot of air off of if you hit. And they were both facing the same direction, yep. which was towards uh, where people were walking through and all that. Yeah, towards but, the freestyle rc guys tried to hit it they couldn't get as much air off of it but when i hit it with the lmt whenever it was still kind of a fresh build right there off of it i hit it at double backflip once landed perfect the next time it doubled landed and then actually rebound Bounce backflipped it. yep yeah that was awesome yeah that but even then everybody started hitting it so when i finally went out again it was broken down more yeah it, once that happened it was killed because uh, there's no water to keep tacking it up it just was crumbling apart the more we hit it yeah and i think my wheelie bar digging in probably helped dig that hill out just a little bit so yeah. you weren't able to get quite as much air off of it uh my favorite hit in that whole freestyle though was the one off the turn berm where i backflipped and landed on the other turn berm yeah it was like i flew across the whole course nice long slow backflip right onto that turn berm i was so mad it didn't land on all fours and stay keep going but it still made for a cool little crash out yeah. of it yeah there's a couple of people that had a nice grease thing. And that's kind of how we'd done it for the, the world finals was. And those corners were big with the intention of doing freestyle off of it all. Yeah. All of the corners were big, which turned to be a little problematic, <laughs> like we said, <laughs> for visibility. However, when we raced, we had um, a driver stand, which gave you just enough height mm -hmm. or you stand on the boxes behind it and it would give you just enough height where you could see your car lid going around yeah. there was at one point uh and i i made the joking suggestion that hey somebody ought to stand on the tires because we had bkts and uh, one side was good year one side was a bkt that yep. you could kind of they were there in the corner so josh williams every single time he got up there he hopped up on the tires so he could see around the berm i'm convinced that's how he was beating me was jumping up there yeah, uh, oh, one man. time I attempted to stand out on the actual track, like the freestyle portion of the track that was built up. I stood up there and tried to get a, a launch on it, but I couldn't follow the truck and turn. It was a, it messed with my equilibrium a little bit. Yeah. But uh, looking back at it, I should. Next time I'm going to bring a step stool. A step I can just stand yeah. up on. Bring one of those ladders, the two, three step ladder. The um, that might be something I actually get for racing if I do it. If I hold any, I might just get a couple two step ladders. That yeah, I, I legit was thinking about that on the way home i was like you know for next year if they build something like this 
and I need to sit a little taller in something, a step stool is probably a great idea to bring. Yep. So Josh and I, man, we had a really tight race for the LMT. Yeah, you guys final. did. Um, it was a best two from the first day and the top two from the second day raced in a four person shootout, basically. Um, turns out that Josh won both first and second the first day, and they took first, and I took second the second day. So it was one car that won twice, couldn't race itself, so they just moved it on. Mm -hmm. And then we raced the other one in the bracket. And I beat him on that one, and then I had to race him again with his fast car. And it was like... 0 0.05 yeah it was close Prince at the end it was so it was a really good race that you guys had there i think of it is is nobody told me throughout the whole like two days that we were doing it they were giving away an lmt yeah i didn't know they were had either. i known that i would have tried a little harder because the, <laughs> the trophy was sitting out the whole time yeah i saw the oh, trophy oh, i thought oh yeah. that's gonna be cool if i could win that that'd be great but i didn't even didn't even know there was an lmt up for grabs until yeah. he gets it and i'm like wait a minute if i'd have known that i'd have tried a lot harder yeah I would have I would have yanked the tire like we were talking the day before on Friday about the stock LMT tires that I had on. I was like, man, I need to change tires because they are not gripping out here whatsoever. I would have swapped yeah, them out swap for out. one of the sets that I had on another LMT that was on the Pro Mod truck. And then switch them back at race time. Yeah, would have switched them back or switched them back for the other race bracket. But yeah, didn't even didn't even think about it. Didn't even want to mess with it. I just thought it was kind of a for fun thing. And then I see him get an LMT. I'm like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> this changes things this has changed everything can we start over <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was so and i didn't even want the the roller i just wanted that trophy it was so nice that trophy was nice yeah i've yeah. got the uh like you got a medallion too but i got one for finishing third in the trigger king spec class okay uh that uh, doug brought i guess it shipped out it was a day late for our last race so doug brought it to me at uh okay. horizon fest but it's got our Trigger King logo and everything on the back of it. It's a cool little medallion. But now I kind of want one of those machined uh, trophies that they have. That's got the first place on it. Yeah. That, that would just look cool. It's just a cool little piece. And anybody that's got one of those, you earned it. You really did. Yep. Well, cool, man. This has been fun. We've gone about 57 minutes here. Almost hit that hour. Oh, we can uh, go for longer. <laughs> yeah, wrap it up here. I think I'm getting a, uh, a text or a phone call asking where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh it's about and almost five o'clock here. I need to start some dinner here pretty yeah. quick. Well, thanks for coming on. It was awesome to see you this past week. Hang out. Hey, awesome stuff. to see you too, man. It was a keep, lot of keep fun. Together and then uh, you know, have some fireworks. Can't beat that kind of an ending to fireworks the and free pizza from Tony CCXRC. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there was no getting out, like food trucks were gone. It was like oh, oh yeah. Gotta stay for fireworks, and if they're gonna deliver. Just get a bunch. Exactly. There you go. Make it worth my uh, delivery fee. Folks, if you have ever seen three pizzas disappear in 15 minutes, it's, it's usually whenever there's a lot of hungry people around. <laughs> yeah, we devoured it. And then somebody had ordered too many pizzas and brought more yeah, over. Yeah, they kept bringing pizza over to you. Yep. It was then great. I heard somebody burned his leg on a grill a little bit later in the evening. I'm not going to say who that was. Oh, yeah. And it actually had a big, my wife was like, and I forgot about it. Cause I was joking about it being like, man, it kind of burns. Like I got a sunburn. Um, but uh, my wife's like, what happened to your leg? And I'm like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> In fact, it's oozing right now. I just, touched oh, it. damn. Okay. Yeah. We don't need to see that on camera. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to pull it up, but I might. Oh, good Lord. Oh, yeah. I could, I saw it. Yeah. What second there? Uh, there's a big purple and it actually like blistered. It's, it's a good, good size, like an egg bigger than <laughs> a big purple egg. And it actually opened up. I blame Josh Zimmerman for that, for having his grill on for too long. It was hot. Yeah. And on the ground right there. <laughs> oh, and you can see it. So we're showing off, off right into it. You know? too, right. We we're showing off his trucks, talking to them on their live stream, um, pilot Ryan media and backed up. Cause Josh was talking about it and stepped right into it. Yeah, I didn't even know that was a live stream too. I thought that guy was just videoing something. Oh no, he's not live. Live every weekend. He's done it for years now. Okay, yeah. I'll have to go back and try and find that and look at it so I can see my trucks. <laughs> yeah, he's a cool dude. Yeah, you'll see him, and but he's also doing some. Uh, he's a pilot, but he's doing a lot of on-road stuff. So. Okay. 
Anyway, um, we're going to check out, guys. Thanks, Josh, for coming on. Thanks for listening, you guys. And uh, we'll catch you all next time. Y'all have a good one. Thanks for listening.